will do anything necessary under the constitution to uphold the mandate of the police force. He said his first priority will be to sustain peace and stability in the country and called for public support. Commissioner Riaz also called on politicians to stay within the boundaries of the constitution and called for the amendment of the police act and the penal code. The military said the defense ministry the military and the defense ministry said their first priority is to uphold the safety of the uh, safety and security of the nation and its mandates as stipulated under the constitution. Apart from one courthouse and a police station in Aju City, pro-Nashi protesters vandalized the rest in Aju City. After vandalizing the gun police station, hit the police station and Aju training school, the protesters burnt it down. Sources say the protesters also vandalized police vehicles and private vehicles of some policemen. Protesters also burnt down the Hulu Magistrate Court, Fabu Magistrate Court, Maladu Magistrate Court and Hitadu Magistrate Court. Some civilians put out the fire at Maladu the Fedu Courthouse, Mibu Magistrate Court and Hulubu Police Station were secured by some islanders as they patrolled near the court until dawn. Later, some inmates were released from gun and hit the police station. pro protesters started a peaceful protest in the evening and it turned violent shortly. Scores of civilians and security forces were injured in the clash, according to a so According to sources, a mob attacked the mayor of Aju City while he was in the council secretariat office. The mayor sustained a fracture in arm due to the attack on him. Some civilians locked the council secretariat of Hitadu, demanding the repair of damages caused to the courthouses and police stations. In the unrest that unfolded in Thinadu, the protesters attacked a island magistrate court and the city council secretariat. Some civilians gathered near the police station near near the police station and voiced their rage at the policemen and the police left the station. But there was some confrontation when police tried to resolve the tension. Protesters hurled bricks at the police station and the police used pepper spray to disperse the crowd. But the situation got out of control and that is when the police inside the station surrendered to the protesters' demands. The protesters also burnt down the police vehicles parked at the tour yard. Next, the protesters attacked the Tinabu magistrate court and the council secretariat. They burnt down the court house to the ground. According to police, protesters caused them bodily harm as well. Former President Mohammed Nasheed says what we witness today is an unlawful government, but it is not the wish of the Maldivian Democratic Party members to overthrow the government from the state streets. He told foreign reporters that they at the press conference held at his house, Gaf Kenerige, that MDP members had intended to work, had intended to have a peaceful walk yesterday, but the security forces obstructed them from doing so and attacked the party members. According to President Nasheed, scores of people were injured yesterday. When asked what a message he wants to give the to the public, the former president said he wants to conduct political activities peacefully and calls the police who confronts in such situations to respect the rules and regulations. He also said uh, no government will sustain if uh, they are aggressive and it requires the love of the public. For President Muhammad Nasheed said he had no intention of leaving the country. The Police Integrity Commission say they are investigating clashes between the MDP supporters and police during yesterday's MDP protests. Police Integrity Commission is investigating the issue due to scores of people being injured during the clashes. A statement released by the Commission stressed that scores of civilians, security officials, public and private property was vandalized during yesterday's unrest. In the statement, Police Integrity Commission strongly condemned and called on all not to repeat the unlawful acts carried out to interrupt the responsibility of police in some islands yesterday. The Commission also called on police not to use excessive force while dispersing protesters. The statement also said the actions of the police should be carried out in a way to earn public confidence. The head of immigration department says a court order was the only way for the department to bar any person from leaving the country. Speaking to TVM News, the new chief of the immigration department, Ilyas Hussain Ibrahim, said the government would not hold the right for any citizen to leave the country. He said the government had not made requests to bar any persons from leaving the country and also 
said the immigration department would only comply with court orders barring people from leaving the country. Now look at international news. Officials say U.S. missiles this morning killed Al-Qaeda's Al chief in Pakistan, one of the Americans main targets in the volatile country and wanted for attacks that killed scores of people. Pakistani officials stated that Abad Mansur, who reputedly sent fighters to Afghanistan and ran a training camp in North Waziristan, was killed in a pre-dawn drone strike near the Afghan border. Activists say Syrian army has resumed shelling in homes, killing at least 13 people so far on Thursday. With several districts controlled by rebel forces, Syria's third largest city is a major focus of unrest against President Bashar al-Assad's rule. Meanwhile, UN chief Ban Ki-moon says, says the failure to agree a UN resolution on Syria had encouraged Damascus to step up its war on its own people. With several districts controlled by rebel forces, Syria's third largest city is a major focus of unrest against President Bashar al-Assad's rule. Scores have been killed since the army started an assault there last week. Activists say those killed as bombardments resumed early this morning include three whole families. On Wednesday, witnesses in the Baba Amr district reported intense shelling by tanks, mortars and artillery and heavy machine guns. According to the UK-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, more than 50 people died in yesterday's attack. The Syrian army says it is fighting for in-backed armed groups. Army defectors have joined rebel forces in homes and other parts of Syria in recent months. UN Secretary General reiterated his regret over the council's inability to speak in one voice to stop the bloodshed. I deeply regret that the Security Council has been unable to speak with one clear voice to end the bloodshed. And the failure to do so is disastrous for the people of Syria. He also said the Arab League was hoping to revive a monetary mission in Syria which collapsed last month amid the escalating violence. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said the League's chief, Nabil al-Arabi, had told him he had asked for UN help with the project and proposed a joint UN-Arab League observer mission, including a joint special envoy. A new United Nations backed survey states that most workers in Afghanistan's brick kilns are bonded child laborers. The report also calls for a strategy that will both provide relief to bonded families and help them escape the cycles of debt, dependence and poverty. The survey titled Buried in Bricks Rapid Assessment of Bonded Labor in Afghan Brick Kilns found that 56% of brick makers in Afghan are children under the age of 18 and 47% are under 14. In addition, the brick kilns rely almost entirely on debt bondage and workers and their families are tied to a kiln by the need to pay off loans taken for basic necessities, medical expenses, weddings and funerals. Lead author of the survey, which was commissioned by the UN International Labour Organization, ILO, Sarah Kramer stated that, faced with never-ending debt, families feel they have to use all available labour, even if it is to their long-term detriment to make daily ends meet. She added that it is out of necessity and extreme poverty that households enlist their children from an early age to work in the kilns. Article 49 of the Afghan constitution prohibits bonded labor, while the Afghan government has also ratified ILO Convention 182, which came to force in Afghanistan last year and identifies bonded labor as one of the worst forms of child labor. The survey conducted between August and October last year in Nangarhar and Kabul provinces found that 64% of the families contacted had worked in the kilns for 11 years or more and 35% for more than 20 years. Both adult and child laborers work for more than 70 hours a week in very poor conditions. Average daily wages are between six to eight dollars for an adult and three to five dollars for a child. 
French President Nicolas Sarkozy warns that military action is no way to deal with a nuclear-minded Iran. In the wake of a new U.S. concern that Israel might, take, might strike Iran's nuclear facilities this spring, Sarkozy reiterated his icon, ironclad commitment to Israel's security but emphasized the solution is...